Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for uh, API World 2021 here at the Pro Stage 2. Uh, this session will be managing asynchronous APIs with Lasantha Samarakun, Associate Technical Lead at WSO2. Um, Lasantha, if you'd like to go ahead and join us on stage here, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, thanks, sir. Welcome, and uh, we'll let you take it away. Yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm Asan Samarakon, an uh, associate technical lead at WSO2. Uh, so now I'm uh, working uh, with the WSO2 API manager team. Uh, OK, uh, so uh, in this session, uh, we are going to talk about uh, Asynchronous APIs and also how what are the ways that we have to manage asynchronous APIs. Uh, yes, in your environment. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so first of all, uh, let's uh, have a look at uh, what we have uh, brief on event-driven architecture. Uh, so uh, RESTful APIs were the mainstay in uh, even uh, today because uh, uh, it is uh it is actually uh actually much preferred by the community over its uh predecessor swap because there are some of the uh some of the factors so like uh rest tool apis are actually uh, lighted and simpler simpler and also it has some uh, uh features like uh, uh features like uh, uh data is not tied to resources and the methods and also it can handle uh, multiple content types and uh, uh, likewise. So, uh, so because of that, the uh, restful APIs are still at the today also is a much preferred uh, API model available. Uh, but, uh, but uh, with the today's world, with the modern uh, microservice-based application, the restful APIs are actually a little bit problematic. So, let's say. There's a cloud native applications and cloud native applications are uh, consist of uh, so much, so many uh, microservices. So there are inter in, inter service communication happens. So in that case, if you are using a micro, uh, if you are using a REST APIs uh, for this inter inter service communication, the network uh, burden on the network bandwidth is actually a much heavier and also CPU utilization because the reason is. REST APIs are actually request response based APIs, request response based uh, APIs. So because of that, there are, uh, if there are, uh, once the TTS comes up, goes up, so there are some issues uh, on the network side because of that, uh, uh, many calls happens between the server and the client. So because of that, uh, uh, there's a need of something else. So because uh, that's why that event-driven architecture came into the place. So this event-driven architecture, uh, yeah. so let's see what is this event-driven architecture. Actually, the event-driven architecture uses events to trigger and communicate among decoupled, uh, decoupled services. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, so in this diagram, you can see there are three microservices available, MS1, MS2, and MS3. So let's say that MS1 need to communicate with MS2 and MS3. So in that case, if you are using a REST APIs, the problem is that MS1 has to uh, request, uh, as you say, request to MS2 or MS3 or vice versa. So, but if you are going for EDA, for the event-driven architecture, the things are much different. So for an example, uh, Example, let's say that uh, there are communication links initiated, already established between these microservices. So MS1 can communicate to MS2 and MS3 on upon established connections. So in that case, if there is something to be communicated be between these microservices, they need to send the message, send the event on that established connection. So in that case, there is no request response happens. You can just push the messages. So that is uh, that is why that EDA is much preferred over uh, REST APIs in uh, microservices world. Okay. Uh, 
So in a, in an event driven architecture, there are main components available, three main components actually, that's the event producer, event router, and the event consumer. So event producer is the one that produces events, and the router actually filters and again publish that event to event consumer to be consumed. So uh, so in this case, event driven uh, event router is uh, there, and in that case, uh, and you can scale, you can uh, plug event producers and event consumers seamlessly. Uh, so because of that, uh, so this is how uh, this is the benefits of EDA. Then this is the uh, when uh, when you are using EDA uh, for your uh, projects, and uh, this, this is uh, these are the uh, benefits that we can get. So for an example. Uh, Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it will help dealing with microservices-based architecture because uh, in that case, the router is there and uh, all the all the services are decoupled. And because of that, uh, uh, decoupled and because of that, it is much easier to uh, deal with microservices-based architecture. And also, you you can scale independently and also you can fail independently. That means the event router is there. And there are uh, the services are actually uh, actually decoupled from each other. Because of that, you can scale scale the components, scale the microservices as you need. And let's say some some microservice got failed, then that is absolutely fine because there is no impact on other services in that case. So because of that, in the EDA, that you can scale independently, uh, and also it is. Uh, much safer in uh, failed scenarios as well. And also, since we have a, in EDA, since we have a router in between, centralized router to communicate between each and every publisher and consumer, producer and consumer, it, it is much easier to apply auditing on that scenario as well. Because that when we apply some policies, we can apply policies on the router. So all the communications are get audited. Uh, and also it is much easier to develop because that uh, all the microservices do not need to call someone and get the information to operator. The router will actually uh, push us whatever the information available for each and every uh, component so they can uh, they can work independently and because of that development of development is much easier that as well. And also since this is a uh, and since there are no uh, since uh, the uh, CPU utilization, network cost, and uh, those things are much less on uh, going uh, going with that uh, event driven architecture. Okay, uh, so these are some of the applications of EDA. You can use that EDA for data replication, enable uh, some parallel processing because that uh, let's say someone someone some 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 service has some information to be uh, dispatched. So uh, within that, uh, so, so for that uh, particular information, particular service, there can be many consumer services available. So uh, it can send the send the message, and all of these consumer services can process that message uh, simultaneously. So enable parallel processing is also possible with this one, and also monitoring and alerting uh, kind of uh, scenario is uh, possible, and also some system integration also, we can use uh, EDA. So these are some of the applications of EDA. So that is a brief about what is event-driven architecture. So uh, in our next section, I'll jump into asynchronous APIs. Okay, uh, the async API. Async API is an, uh, actually a specification. Uh, so this is a project used to describe and document message-driven APIs in both human and machine-readable format. So that is, uh, again, I think uh, you are familiar with Open API specification. So this is somewhat similar to the Open API specification, the Async API specification. Open API is also used to describe a document, uh, document, no, HTTP APIs, REST APIs. So uh, the thing is that Async API is used to, uh, used to describe and document message-driven APIs. Or else, uh, for an example, you can you can document, you can describe WebSocket APIs, SSC, uh, or else you can Kafka, JMS, any kind of API using this uh, specification. 
So uh, async API is actually uh, born because of that. Uh, there was some challenge in uh, challenging uh, having a general abstract uh, uh, some abstract uh, abstraction on uh, abstracted. Uh, I mean uh, specification on uh, different protocol. Uh, so so it was it was a challenge having with this. Uh, a sync API. Uh, so the sync API actually then after uh, this implementer, it is a protocol agnostic. That means that uh, you can use uh, several protocols. You can uh, you can describe APIs. Uh, you can describe several protocols using the, this async API specification. So there are about uh, uh, as it is listed, there are about 13, 13 kind of protocols available, like uh, HTTP protocols like WebSocket, SSC, or WebSocket, and uh, JMS, Kafka, and QTT, and QP, there are, there are, the list is growing actually. And also this uh, specification is open source. And now uh, the current version is actually async API 2.2. 2.2 uh, is available. And uh, also, uh, and also uh, this is also specified in JSON and YAML format. So JSON and YAML is uh, supported for async API specification. So you can see the specification uh, at this uh, URL. So this is the uh, official specification. Okay. Uh, so uh, within the async API specification, there are some uh, there are some main parts available. So uh, I'll explain this much. Uh, when we, are, when we are looking into an actual SNK API definition. Uh, so these are some of the main parts available. If you are familiar with uh, Open API, some kind of a similar similar sections are available in Open API, Open API specification as well. So uh, for an example, I listed some of the main uh, main sections available in the SNK API specification like server. For an example, server. Server is a, a section where you describe actual endpoints. For an example, let's say you have a WebSocket uh, WebSocket API. So in that case, WebSocket endpoint is uh, described under this uh, server section, and the channel section is to is something similar to uh, REST API resources. So you can categorize uh, messages, categorize operations based on these uh, channels. Uh, and after that, uh, you have operations. For an example, in Open API, you have a Operations like in a REST API, you have operations like uh, get, put, post, like that. And in async API, you have publish and subscribe. And then the message means the actual payload. So how the message is uh, consistent of. You can say these are the attributes available. So if it is a JSON format, then you can see these are the attributes available and these are the data types and these are the descriptions. And if there are some uh, limitations, some uh, restrictions or validations available, you can describe them as well. So there are, uh, the, there are several sections uh, as well. So let's have a look on uh, them uh, when we are uh, referring to actual CPK specification. So these are actually the main, main sections available that, uh, within that specification. Okay, uh, so if you are familiar with Open API, so this is a little, uh, this is a small comparison between those two. So, for and what is the Open API and what are what is the difference of Sync API? So, in the Open API, actually, uh, if I go through this list, uh, Open API, you have a single client connection, single server. So, it is a request response based, right? So, you have a HTTP client and you are connecting to HTTP server, and then you are sending a request and you are getting a response. But when it comes to the Zinc API, the thing is a little bit different. That means there are many consumers available. All of them are connected to a single server, and the information is, is shared within this set of consumers at the same time. So that is the difference between Open API and the Zinc API. And also Open API, you have to request information from the server. So it is a request response. You are requesting the information. But if, when, come, when it comes to the async API, there are no requests. Once you have, then you have established a connection, uh, the server is proactively sent notifications to you. So if new information available, they are pushing those information to the 
to whatever the consumers available. And open API support on HTTP, but as in KPI, it is, as I mentioned, it is protocol agnostic. There are uh, several bindings, several protocols supported by the async API specification. Okay, so this is a little bit of a comparison between open API and async API. Okay, now I'll jump into a, a sample API and show you how it is consist of sample uh, specification. Uh, so uh, this is a sample specification. Uh, I simplified this one a little bit. Uh, so you can see uh, there are these other sections available. So this info section, it describes what is this API set. APIs are. It has some uh, title descriptions, versions, likewise. And the servers, servers describe what are the actual inputs. So for an example, this is the stuff, mosquito.org, and this is the port, and the protocol is MQTT, and these are some descriptions available, and some variables, likewise. And after that, the channels. Channel means it is something similar to REST resources. So you have a, you have a channel, and again you have some description, and whatever the content, what are the parameters there, and what is the message. So for an example, in this case, uh, let's say this uh, light measured channel. In that case, the message is referred like light measured. Like measured. So in here you can see uh, this is the summary and payload. Payload is like measured payload. Yeah, like measured payload is type object and it has some properties like elements. It is an integer. Minimum is zero and description. There's a description available and again centered is another another property. Some complex type. So uh, that this is this is some uh, this is a uh, these are channels. So within that, within under this channel section, there can be multiple channels available, uh, multiple channels, and also within that channel, you have a description parameters and whatever the uh, message types, message sections available. So something like that. So this is uh, it. Uh, Okay, uh, so let's see what is actually a manage and async API means. So uh, in an organization, if you have a set of REST APIs, you need to you need to publish, you need to expose to the expose to external parties like third parties or something. You can't just open whatever the APIs you have. You have to do some. You have to take some uh, precautions before exposing them. Like you have to enforce security, and and also you have to do some uh, try some rate limiting uh, uh, rate limiting policies as well, and and sometimes you can monetize your APIs. Like uh, you can say that you can restrict that within this uh, within this package you are allowed, you only allow uh, five thousand events 5,000 uh, requests per day, something like that, or requests per hour, something like that. So monetization policies and rate media policies. These kind of policies, these kind of security enforcement are done for REST APIs. So something similar applied to the, uh, something similar applied to the async APIs as well. So for an example, let's say you have a WebSocket API, uh, which will flush some information. So in that case, so in that case, you can't just open it. You can you can't just expose it to the third party. You have to take some similar actions like enforcing security, likewise. So that is what we call managing an async API. So it is similar to the REST API. You have to uh, take some precautions before exposing the exposing APIs to uh, to the uh, third parties. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's see how we can actually this. Uh, management of async API can be uh, done. So uh, for that, we have some use case. So it is running a pizza store. So let's say there's a, a small pizza store uh, where, the, uh, where our customers are, uh, walk into the store, into the front desk and place an order. 
and then uh, and then that front desk will take the order and inform the kitchen via KOT or kitchen order ticket and the kitchen will prepare the pizza and uh, and deliver that to the customer so this is a simple uh, case of pizza store so now uh, now think uh, one of these pizza store want to uh, expand its business so now it is a single storefront available only the customers can walk in there and uh, place order and take the pizza and go out. so something like this so it is a single storefront now the now the owner wants to expand its business so what is uh, so now the apps are popular so there are so many food delivering apps so something like that that now this owner want to uh, work with those apps as well so what it does so they are uh, they are exposing a pizza api so this pizza api uh, what, customers can uh, use several apps several apps to place orders by this pizza api so this pizza so once an order is placed the pizza api will create a key, uh, kot or a kitchen or a ticket and send it to the kitchen service so within the kitchen they can prepare the pizza and then uh, deliver it to the uh, it to particular customers uh, real customer actually uh, so in this case there are several storefront not the physical front but there are several apps uh, where customers can place orders okay uh, so the next question comes in now the uh, customers or the delivery guy wants to know what happens to this order so if i am the customer i want to see what uh, in which state my order is whether it is still pending whether the pizza is now uh, baked and it is ready for delivery whether it is dispatched there or whether it is delivered and also the rider guy uh, uh, someone who picked the deliver the pizza i want to see whether that pizza is prepared or not so if it is prepared he can uh, go to the uh, pizza store physically and get the and uh, get the pizza and deliver so that kind of service is also incorporated in visa so in that case now the uh, now the scenario will get a little bit uh, uh, complex so in this case you can see instead of this uh, apart from this uh, pizza api there's another api introduced like tracker api so this tracker api can be used by each and uh, each of these apps to see what happens to this track this order and also there are, there can be some ride apps where the riders can uh, see and riders can uh, uh, track the orders likewise so uh, so let's take a, a single order so this guy plays an order the pizza api will create a kot and it will go to the kitchen service now the kitchen is now uh, kitchen updates this order so let's say order is one two three. this order is still in pending state so it publishes saying that this order is still in pending state and now they are starting start preparing it so they update the status saying prepare it so, uh, baking and there's a and then once it is finished kitchen service updates its state saying now it is ready to be delivered then dispatched then finally once it is handed over, handed over to the customer the ride again can ride again can update it as delivered so uh, so in this case now the status is changed change continuously so in that case what uh, what we can use here is instead of a normal rest api or something we can use a sync api so a sync api in that case the kitchen service and the tracker api has a a uh, single async API already established async API, sync link, and within that async link, uh, kitchen service can publish messages to the tracker API, and this tracker API will distribute these messages to all of its, its consumers, like these apps, and then the uh, then people can see the status real time on these apps. <coughs> Okay, uh, so this is uh, this is a, a 
some uh, this is in this use case so let's see how we can actually implement this one so for an example now what now we need is we have this delivery service in the kitchen service and it will update some information it publishes some information and we have this tracker api and it comes as it comes to the uh, whatever the apps are available okay so solution is something like this you have the kitchen service and delivery service then we are thinking about so these are some notifications some uh, some events so to keep those events we are uh, introducing a kafka queue here and now all the messages which are updated which are sent from the kitchen service or the delivery service is available within this kafka topic and now we have apps so for an like for an, let's say there's an app that app need that state need that uh, message in a websocket format so now it is in here it is a kafka topic and the message within a kafka topic in here it needs that information as websocket service websocket and via websocket endpoint so how we can uh, reach this gap so within this bridging bridging between this uh, kafka topic and the app there are some precautions that we need to take like this is our internal uh, internal system application is our is an external system so in that case we have to apply some security security scenario so this can't be an open api open endpoint and also sometimes we need to apply some rate limiting as well and also there's a protocol bridging protocol bridging is in here it is a kafka here it needs as a web socket so definitely there's a protocol bridging we need to uh, work on so how we can how we can solve this problem for that uh, we are introducing uh, we are using uh, two different products here uh, one here one one is actually the streaming integrator and the api manager these are the two products that we are going to use the streaming integrator and the digital api manager okay let's see how we can uh, solve the problem using these two products so in here you can see uh, now our messages are available within the kafka topic so what is a streaming integrator is integrator doing here is it actually reads messages from the kafka so within this uh, in this use case so streaming integrator can uh, can configure to create messages from this kafka topic particular kafka topic and and expose it via a webSocket endpoint if you need to do transformation or some mediation part you can do uh, that as well but in this case we are not going to do any transformation in here we are reading a message from the kafka and we are exposing it via a websocket endpoint as it is so now this websocket endpoint is not secured so it is not managed actually so still we can't expose it to the it to third party to make it a managed api what we are doing here is we are passing through this web server, this websocket endpoint via wz api manager so wz api manager can manage this websocket endpoint and expose it to the external parties you can apply apply security rate limiting and all of these uh, all of these uh, things on on your api okay uh, so yeah so this is this is the sample payload that uh, we are uh, we are thinking of so in here let's say that uh, this is a json payload and you have an event and within that event you have a old id and what is the status so this is a simple simple payload you have the old id and the status uh think that order id is actually a number and the status is a string okay uh, so now how we can actually implement this one okay for that uh, first thing we have to do is we have to read these messages from the kafka topic and expose it as a website endpoint so for that uh I'm using WS2 Streaming Integrator. So here you can see uh, this is the WS2 Streaming Integrator tooling. Uh, WS2 Streaming Integrator tooling, which is actually the IDE. It runs in the browser. Uh, so here you can actually uh, create some applications to do to uh, read from different sources, type to different things, 
and uh, you can do some mediation you can do some uh, calculations and those kind of things you can do and uh, you can interact with databases all these things can be done via the apps we are uh, writing here so you can try out the samples there are a set of samples here if you uh, find it uh, try this out okay now i'm going to create a new uh, application to read data from read messages from this Kafka, Kafka Dolly, and expose it as a web socket service. So the first thing is we need to read from Kafka. Okay, so uh, I'll name this uh, app as a pizza tracking app. Uh, I'm not going to change the description. Let's keep it as it is. Now we need to in a way to uh, keep this message within our stream integrator. Read read the Kafka message, and we need to keep it somewhere here. So for that, what we are doing here is uh, this is actually a Siddhi application. It's called Siddhi application. So you are using Siddhi language to write an application here. So uh, I'm defining a stream here. So if a stream is some kind of a record, some kind of a record you are keeping on. So it has a name, it has some attributes, likewise. So in here, I'm, I'm defining a stream. Uh, I'll name this uh, stream as uh, Kafka input stream. You can give whatever the name you need. And then there are some attributes. So the attributes are, in here we have the order ID and the status. I name it as order ID, which is an integer and the status is a string okay now uh, our stream is our record uh, stream is uh, done now we need to configure this stream to read messages from Kafka. so for that we are using a uh, Kafka. Yeah, uh, now I have a Kafka runtime, uh, uh, Kafka runtime, uh, which is uh, running so in my local machine. So I'm configure the configure it as local as 9092 and topic. I need to create a topic. So uh, first, uh, let's create a topic. <coughs> okay, I'm going to create a topic. Uh, topic here. Uh, Okay, uh, I'm creating a topic. My topic name is actually a pizza, uh, pizza tracks. So I can see a topic is created. Uh, so it is pizza tracks and group ID. I need to provide the group ID. Let's say it is uh, tracking group. Threading option is single thread okay uh, now uh, we are expecting a json message so this is a default json message uh, we are expecting in our streaming integrator uh, that's why it is uh, there's an expert on like event here uh, so i say it is a json okay now siddhi uh, now the siddhi knows uh, to read the message from Kafka and the Kafka and the and then message type is JSON. Okay, now this now uh, that part is completed. Now we need to expose this message via a WebSocket endpoint. So for that, since this message payload is not changing, we are going to create the same. Get a copy of this stream. I'll rename this one as uh, WebSocket output stream. It has order ID and the status. Now we need to configure this to uh, this as a WebSocket endpoint. Uh, it is a uh, sync WebSocket server. You need to provide host. I'll say uh, the host is localhost and the port is 8830. And now again, the type is 
belleza. La pipe es belleza. Yeah, uh, we are done. So now we have the Kafka source and also the web circuit server sync. So now we need to fill the gap actually. So we don't know, the CT doesn't don't know that we need to copy this Kafka message coming here to this one. So for that, we have to write some uh, SQL-like statement saying from Kafka input stream, select all that you use and insert into WebSocket output stream. Yeah, that's it. So now we have completed with this, uh, with this streaming integrated part, almost completed. So uh, now this WebSocket output stream, whatever the message going going through this WebSocket output stream is a WebSocket message and it is a async API. So uh, now we need to, uh, now uh, we can actually, from here we can actually generate async API definition for that, uh, for this WebSocket uh, API as well. So let's see how we can uh, generate the async API definition. So in here you can see async API we here. Uh, we have to provide some information I'll say it's a cracking API. Question is this one. Uh, maybe it's a cracking message. Messages. And uh, what is the source of sync? Uh, it is actually sync, web script server sync. And this is the stream that we are going to use. I'm going to generate a sync. So now you can see. This is the async API definition. We have, we have created the async API definition. definition. The server is uh, 8830, and we have this uh, code idea in the status, and there is an integer string. Everything is completed. Now I'll click on this add async API. You can see, uh, and then go back to the code view. Now the async API definition is added here. Okay, now I save this one. Now we need to create a Managed API. Now we are completed up to here. Now we need to manage this API before exposing to the third party. So how we can manage? So for that, we can actually deploy this to a server. So uh, this deploy to a server means we are deploying to a streaming integrator runtime here. So the runtime will actually sync with the API manager uh, to deploy this uh, sync API definition there. So from the API manager, using this async API definition, we can create a uh, managed API out of it. So uh, I'm selecting this is my CT application, and this is the uh, streaming integrator runtime which is running on. It is localhost 9443. I'm going to click deploy. Okay, you can see this file is deployed. So so uh, now go to the API manager. So this is the WSO2 API manager. So in here you can see uh, this is the publisher application. So here we can create APIs, different types of APIs. Like here you can create a REST APIs from the sketch, or you can import an open API and a SOAP API, GraphQL, and streaming APIs. So under this streaming APIs, you can see you can create a WebSocket APIs, webhook, SSC, uh, likewise. Okay, uh, okay, I'll increase the font size. Yeah, uh, Claudia, uh, I'll share the, uh, share the Docker Compose on this one, uh, on this scenario uh, at the end of the presentation. So you can uh, have a look on that. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, this kind of APIs you can create. So now I'm, we are not going to use any of these instead uh since we have already published that specification to a uh, worker and then the api manager we can use that uh, from here under the service catalog you can see that pizza tracking api is there so this is the service url uh, local state 8030 now i'm going to create an api okay uh let's give the name as, as pizza tracking Version 100. You can give whatever the context you need. So I prefer pizza, uh, pizza cutter. And then create API.
Uh, okay, I think I duplicate. Uh, I click twice. So I think that's the case. Okay, uh, now it's fine. Uh, now you can see now we have created the uh, picture tracking API. Okay, so in here you can uh, add some uh, add some features like you can apply some rate limiting policies. You can apply security uh, those things to the, your managed API. So first I'll apply some business plans. Uh, I click on this list, uh, business plan. And here you can see there are several business plans available, like a sink gold, a sink silver. So it says that 50,000 events per day, 25,000 events per day, something like that. So I'll allow these two. I'll save. I'm going back to overview. And now I need to uh, go and see topics. So in here, under this topics, you can see there's a root channel available. This root channel. Here's yes, so payload properties. So you can, I think, uh, you just remember uh, these attributes within the sync API definition and also our CP stream contain at the same, you know, the ideas in data and status that stream. I enable security here and I'll save it. Okay, I'll go back to overview. Now I need, now we have enabled security, we have enabled business plans, and we are going to deploy this one. To it gateway. Okay, now deployed, deployed the revision and then publish. Yeah, uh, I think uh, we are done with that API. Now we can test test the API out. So in here you can test that using the dev portal. Dev portal is another application where the developers uh, where the users actually go and uh, test the APIs. Okay, so now we are in the developer portal. Uh, I'll sign in. Okay, sign in. And pizza tracking API is the one. Now, uh, API is there. Now we need to subscribe. We need to it is secure the API. So we need to get the uh, access token and uh, subscribe and get access token and access this API. Uh, so I'm going to subscribe and I'm going to generate some keys. So here you can see uh, these are the grant types available. So I'm going to generate keys. And in your environment, you can uh, generate access tokens as well. So this is how you can generate access token. But in this demo, we don't need that access token since we are using a test token. But uh, that is how we can generate. And then after that, I'm going to just try out. Try out. I'm going to get the test key. So it will create a random test key. Okay, uh, so now you can see we have the uh, we have our channel listed here, and now we can generate the curl. So this this will generate this wscat uh, command with the token. So you can run this one within the terminal. You can do this that out. I'm going to copy this curl. Now let's jump into a uh, empty terminal. And terminal. So, uh, so this, uh, so in this case, uh, we have this kitchen service and the delivery service, and here we have the app. But uh, for this demo demonstration, we don't have actual service. Instead, instead of this app, we are using WSCAT, uh, which is a WebSocket client. And uh, for and instead of these services, we are using uh, we are using uh, uh, Kafka. Console producer uh, to uh, okay. I'm going to paste that command wsget command. Uh, actually, I need to change the port here. Okay, 
Okay. Uh, we can see uh, we have connected to the connected connected to the endpoint. Now we need to uh, we need to uh, publish some message messages. Okay. Uh, so for that I'll use uh, uh, Kafka console producer. So in here Kafka console producer here I'm, uh, the topic is pizza tracks. Uh, I'm going to publish some messages. Okay, I'll send a message. This is my message. So it is actually adhered to the, uh, to the uh, uh, payload we have here. Event order ID and the status. You can see event order ID is one. Status is pending. So once I uh, put this message into the produce into the Kafka topic, it will appear here by the managed API. Yeah, I think uh, you can uh, see the message. And I'll publish another message. It comes here. So uh, now that is how it works. So in here, as a recap, uh, we have from the Kafka topic, uh, we have uh, we read the messages from the Kafka topic using the CP application in the, within this string integrator and expose it as a WebSocket endpoint, and use this API manager to. Uh, Manage to uh, manage this WebSocket endpoint by applying some policies like uh, rate limiting policies and also uh, security. So, uh, uh, if you need to try this out, uh, here's the Docker Compose of this demo. Uh, uh, it can be found at uh, this link uh, in this GitHub URL. Uh, so, anyway, uh, we are sharing this uh, video. And the presentation uh, in few days. Few days, so you can have a, a look on this. Uh, look on uh, this one as well. Uh, so uh, I think that's it. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, uh, we have some few minutes available. Yeah, uh, yeah, because that dev portal is a part of part of the API manager. So API manager has uh, uh, different portals like uh, publisher, uh, is actually a publisher, a publisher app is there where you can uh, actually create, uh, let's say, uh, create APIs and create APIs. And after that, uh, you can uh, push that uh, once it is published, it is available in the dev portal, API manager dev portal. So it is also a part of the API manager. Uh, yeah, uh, so this solution actually it is a production tool that means that you, know, you can uh, uh, you can implement this in a production environment as well. So with your I mean with your requirement uh, the scale uh, scalable uh, this uh, system sales scale. So you have to uh, consider those things, but the solution as a solution it is proven it is uh, it is actually ready uh, does this tool have features for handling unexpected payloads something like message uh, hospital uh, so uh, unexpected payload so in that case actually uh, uh, we can identify that we can we can do some uh, logics we can uh, uh, we can uh, write some uh, mediation logics in in the stream integrator and also uh, stream integrator to uh, do uh, identify those kind of uh, invalid messages and then uh, act upon uh, those things uh, yeah I, there are, so that is kafka and websocket is uh, actually uh, for this demonstration purpose only. So there are several other sources that you can use. For an example, instead of Kafka, Kafka you can use HTTP, or you can use CDC where you can read from a database. So for an example, let's say let's say you need to capture a data inserts to a particular table. So in that case, your database is, a, is the source. 
So you can read data from the database uh, via CDC, change data capturing, and then you can expose it as a several, uh, instead of WebSocket, there are several sources as well. Like you can call an HTTP endpoint, or you can write to a database, you can write to a file, likewise. So it is also possible. But uh, since this is an uh, async API demonstration, we, are, we have can use WebSockets. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you have if you have any issue with the uh, demonstration, so uh, now I think uh, Claudia has uh, shared the link, uh, repo link. Uh, so if you have any concerns, just raise an issue, so I'll, I can jump in and help you out. And also you can uh, send an email or send email to me uh, regarding that, then I can help that out. So. Uh, Uh, okay. All right. Uh, if you're uh, done wrapping up, it looks like we're out of time. Um, yeah. But yeah, I see that you, uh, if you have, you have some contact information you'd like to pop in the chat there um, for any further questions, uh, feel free to do so.